So um, as it's now 646, we'll call the retreat to order. The first item of business or the second item is item 2.1. 2. 2. There was actually a motion to amend the agenda, so we'll do that first. So a motion to amend to adopt the agenda. So moved. Uh, that's been seconded by um, Mark, Councilor Barlow. <laughs> I don't even think of first names. Um, <laughs> and Joe, can you hear me? I can, yep. Okay, all right. So Joe is also, Councilor McGee is also joining us. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Joe. Um, so the second, I, or actually, that's right. I'm sorry. I got, uh, uh, we have to vote on that. So there's a first, a second. All those in favor of the motion to adopt the agenda, please say Aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. That means we have our agenda. Um, so that moves us on to the public forum. Um, uh, there are a couple of members of the public that are here. Do any of you wish to speak? Okay. So, so you know, um, so just so that just so that we all know the the system here. Um, you know, obviously we're not in Contois. So. Um, uh, I'm going to just have to use a timer. Um, we have a two-minute. We have a two-minute timer, and uh, um, it seems as though two of you that wish to speak are both Burlington residents, so we don't have to. We can forego that. Um, and then the only thing that I would ask is what, as you as you know, we always ask at, at public forum, and that is to please use respectful language. The, this meeting is being taped. It's not live, but it is being taped. And we do know that there are people who will watch this meeting uh, potentially for years to come. And we would appreciate it if people would speak with us respectfully, address your comments to me as the chair, do not address them to anyone else at this table. And just as a, a caveat, that rule will be enforced. I will interrupt any speaker who attempts to personalize their comments to anyone at this table. Um, and uh, with that, Lee, welcome. Yes, hello, I'm Lee Morgan, I live in Ward 7. I came tonight because I'm really interested um, about this topic, mostly because I don't know what the answer is, but I'm really excited to see what you all develop. Um, so to keep it concise, I think the reflection I'm thinking about is my background as a mental health professional, particularly watching um, interactions during public comment from individuals who are clearly experiencing a, a passionate moment and whether that moment has some pathology. Um, I think what I'm interested in is what do you do when an individual um, for whatever reason is not able to engage in decorum? Do you recess? Do you let them finish their two minutes and if they always leave when their time is up? I don't know what the right answer is. Um, my only reflection as someone experienced in de-escalation and conflict, um, there have been times where I've wondered if something would, would be over much more quickly if once a recess is called, if there's still an active audience and it's, you know, and all the counselors are still there, it's really gonna not matter to the individual that their time is up if there's still an audience and it may help them de-escalate and disengage if the audience moved. I don't know if that's the council leaving the room or the room being cleared, but there have been instances where I've seen where I think the individual would have disengaged much more quickly if the audience factor was removed. And that's all I wanted to share. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lee. <laughs> Chris, did you want to speak? Have a seat. We don't have a public forum table, so this will do. Well, hot seat now. I just want to say thank you all for the work that you do. Um, I know how much time I put in on the Marketplace Commission, on the School Commission before that, and it's, it can be a challenging, there's been a lot of you know, um, controversial, contentious issues, so I applaud you guys for taking this on and trying to move us uh, you know, into a format where we have a little more uh, civility in our public meetings. Um, process is important, and I'm glad that y'all are uh, taking some time out to try to figure out what we can do to, to conduct ourselves in a manner that uh, reflects the important work that y'all are doing. So thank you again for what you do. Thanks so much, Chris. Did, did you want to speak? No. No? Okay. Well, welcome. Okay. <laughs> did you want to have to, you're, you're welcome to have what we have here as well. If you don't have it, some, one of us, if you don't have it, one of us are going to bring it home. I am not talking at night. Okay, so we'll close the public forum at 651.
and we'll continue on with our with the purpose of our evening. Um, so other than getting us all together, which um, I wanted to do a couple of months ago, but it was never easy to find a date. And miraculously, we found this date in like a week. So thank you all for being here. Um, other than to have some good food and conversation, the point of the retreat is to discuss public forum and um, our council meetings. Um, and I, I would very much like to get all of your feedback on two aspects of public forum. Um, the first is that, you know, as you know, we've had a few challenging public forums. And while the point of this evening is not to discuss the subject matter of the public forums, um, what I'm hoping to get feedback on from all of you is that we need to determine amongst the 12 of us and, well, the 11 of us that are here, um, uh, what we feel is the acceptable standard. What do we think is the acceptable standard of decorum at a council meeting? And um, I think we all need to be reasonably in agreement as to what the steps are that we're going to take to make sure that we honor what we collectively agree to as the standard. Um, decorum at public meetings and a public and public forum is is one item. And you know, in the last in the last month or so, I've heard a lot from a lot of people about decorum during public forum. Um, the other item that I'd like to get your feedback on is. Um, uh, personal safety and safety of staff, safety of the council, safety of the community, so that we have meetings where everyone feels welcome, everyone feels supported, and everyone feels heard. Um, and I'm interested in getting your feedback first on, well, there's two things, first on decorum, and I'll give you a couple of thoughts about <clears throat> what I'd like to try to cover, um, and then I'll leave it all to you. Um, the first is, um, what do you feel should be the procedure when somebody refuses to stop speaking during public forum? Um, does turning to face the gallery, meaning not the council, but the others who are gathered, does that constitute a breach of decorum? And if so, what do we do about it? Um, and the other is, does the prolific use of profanity constitute a breach of decorum. Um, and then the other thing I did want to ask about was that our council rules do allow us to have people only speaking to agenda items. There's a form that, if you haven't seen it, there's a form that you fill out, you ask what, it asks what agenda item you wish to speak to. Most people do fill that out, not everyone. Some people want to talk about personal stories. Some people want to talk about their musings about the world. Um, that does not have to be a part of public forum. We can limit ourselves to only covering what is on the agenda. Um, so these are all thoughts about what we are able to do. We have Haley here. I imagine all of you know Haley, um, Assistant City Attorney. And um, those are the things that I'm hoping to get your feedback on so that we can we can move forward with what we feel is a reasonable um, and respectful public forum that welcomes everybody and does not deter people from wanting to speak. And then the other question is about safety and security. At our last meeting, there were counselors who, after the meeting, expressed to me safety concerns going forward. Um, in other words, we need to ensure that you know our staff feel welcome, they feel supported, that they don't feel unsafe um, and in the in those in with that the things that I had thought we could discuss were you know whether or not um, anyone is in favor of or wants to speak about a presence in Contoy such as Chocolate Thunder um, if anyone would entertain the idea of having a CSO in Contoy so these are the ideas that have come to me and then whether or not, um, I didn't know what this word was, it's called stashion, stations? No, Stan stanchions, stanchions. So stanchions are those things with the ropes. Um, 
and how people would feel about having those in front of the table, how people would feel about having those to the side. We have done that before. We have had at large, when we know that there's a large public forum, we have had those in beside us so that that way no, no counselor feels that literally there are members of the public that are within a few feet of us from behind. Um, and um, so those are, those are the thoughts. We have the room, we have this room until 8.30, not suggesting that we have to stay that long, but I'm interested in what you have to say because in the end, this is our, this is the community city council. We're all part of that. Um, and while our time on the city council is temporary, this body will endure for hopefully many, many decades and to come. And we need to protect that. So, um, that's all I have to say. I'm here to listen to what all of you feel, <coughs> and how you feel, and how you feel we, can, we can do better going forward, and how you feel I can do better going forward, because obviously I want to, so. And please feel free to go and eat as well, if you want. I will just say, you know, I, I really appreciate you having this meeting, Karen. We had a lot of text conversations anyway about this, and, you know, my point really was that I, I think Karen has taken a fair amount of heat. We're doing this informally, right, President Paul? Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, Karen has at times taken a lot of heat for a lack of decorum in our meetings, and I actually don't. I, I think the council president can express an intention to keep order in a certain way, but actually it doesn't work unless the council president knows that the entire body is with them because no one person can control the kind of things that happen in our room. And I know when I was council president, I also had you know some really difficult meetings, the F-35s, and, and I could not have controlled those meetings without the support of the council. So, um, it's really helpful going into a meeting knowing that we're all on the same page, we have the same expectations, and that we're going to have the council president's back no matter who the council president is. Um, I mean, maybe we change our standards over, over time, but this at least gives us a starting place to come to agreement on the, on the expectations. Thanks. Um, after, I, after you and I spoke, I decided that uh, Talking with one former council president, this wasn't enough. So I spoke with six of them. And basically they all said the same thing. They did not know, they did not have the answer, but the one thing that they did know that was that as a body, we all have to, we all have to determine what we feel is the, is the standard. Because if we don't, then the standard is effectively what anybody says the standard is. And I don't think we can function as a body if we just, if we do that. It's the default right now. Yeah. <laughs> the standard is a lack of a standard by default in a lot of ways. I think it might be curious for you gentlemen, but just in general, um, the comment about we all have to support it. What, what does that look like? I mean, sometimes you get a little overwhelmed and so you just sort of sit there and don't do anything. So I'm just, I mean, really just asking that as a question, because I agree with you that we need to show support and we need to support the council president. But you know, like in the minute, what would that look like? I think it's about expectations. Like when I had to, do, I, I, we often have some idea when we're gonna have a difficult meeting. So when we knew that about F-35s, I let people know I, I actually, I don't know if you were in on those conversations because I met with the city attorney, um, former council presidents. Um, Max Tracy was actually really helpful to me at the time um, because we weren't, on, we weren't on the same side of the issue. And so having, you know, talking to Max and having Max's <coughs> agreement that he would help me with the crowd because some of the people in the room are my people. Some of the room, people in the room are his people. And we agreed that we expected order in the room and that Max would call to his people to, to quiet down. And me calling to his people wasn't going to do anything. 
Max calling to his people really helped keep order in that room. And also, we created, you know, we were hearing from the same people over and over and over again, all about the same things over and over and over again. The council agreed that we're not, if we, you spoke at this meeting, you are not going to speak at, to the same issue on this, you know, uh, at the next meeting. If we've already heard from you on F-35s, we don't need to hear from you again. We're gonna give that time to somebody else. And we also agreed that <clears throat> the public forum was going to end. And so if the public were acting in disruptive ways, fewer people were going to get to speak. <laughs> so, so in order to be respectful of everybody else's time, kind of using the whole room as remember we're a community here and if you're going to take too much time you're taking from somebody else's time because more people want to speak tonight than we have time to hear from and we're going to end this at this time so you need to stop speaking because you're taking other people's time now we've had meetings recently where that simply wouldn't be the case there's not that many people our last meeting there was hardly anybody and we have this major disruption I completely agree with what Lee said. When we have, when we call a recess, it's really important to physically indicate we are on recess, that we are no longer your captive audience. So I, I completely, that's exactly what I was thinking, Lee, is that it continues because we continue to listen and we feel like this is the respectful thing to do to continue to listen, but actually to de-escalate it we need to remove ourselves. Uh, somebody's very mad at us, so we need to remove ourselves from the table. We could even go into, you know, potentially we can go downstairs. Potentially we have a plan for who is gonna stay in that room, who won't be the target because they're kind of non-political, and wait until order comes back. Um, Time is still limited because the point of public forum is actually by state law to hear about our agenda items we're doing the business of the people and our top priority should be hearing from the public about our agenda items if we want to go beyond that my suggestion would be <clears throat> that we do that at the end of our meeting if somebody wants to talk about whatever under the Sun I think we still need to have guardrails we've just seeing people doing harm to the community in their comments it has nothing to do with us it's personal and i think it's also important to have an opportunity for the public to say hey how come you guys aren't doing anything about x y and z which is not on the agenda and raise something to our attention there's a number of ways to do it you can email us you can call us um or you can come to public forum it's, the public forum isn't the only way to communicate we should remember that and I think doing the business of the people in a professional way is important. And did you want to say something? Uh, well, I had a specific thought, but now there's sort of a good amount on the table. Um, I, I agree. Um, thank you very much for having this meeting, Karen. Um, I, I agree with everything that's been said about I think that it's important that we have a, a common set of standards and you know what it means for us to sort of all, all be behind that is that we all let Karen know that, that we're behind it um, such that when you have to enforce whatever those standards are you don't have to do so questioning whether or not your colleagues around the table are agreeing or disagreeing um, with uh, you're having to enforce the standards. And, and to me, I think we have to have those standards and have them in place sort of regardless of whether or not we agree or disagree with a viewpoint that someone is bringing to the table. I think honestly, while I have empathy for perhaps some mental health issues that folks have brought to the table, that even for those folks that perhaps cannot help themselves, um, in the decorum standards that we have, that we, we need to have uh, a common understanding and, and that you should have our support in even enforcing our rules uh, and decorum standards in, in those situations. Um, in terms of 
what folks can bring to the table. I actually don't think that we should necessarily limit it to agenda items. I think the city council public forum is a place that historically has, has been an area where folks have general concerns in our community. They know they can come to the council. Not everyone is, I think it's more so now, but not everyone is as tuned into using email or technology. And there's some meaning to actually coming before the council physically and, and relaying concerns that you have for your community. So I don't necessarily favor are limiting public forum to agenda items, but you know, I do think that we should set a standard where it's not appropriate to be screaming at the city council. I think it's appropriate for us to set a standard that it's not appropriate to be using intimidating language or intimidating body language. I think we should have a standard that folks need to stay in their seat when they're at the public forum table. Um, I think that uh, we should maintain the standard about not uh, personally calling folks out, either on the council, certainly uh, members in the public, uh, sort of individually by name. Um, I actually think as a council, uh, you know, when you look to other legislative bodies, that they have a standard even amongst themselves to not call one another out by names. And, you know, even in, you know, the U.S. Senate and Congress where uh, folks could not be more different, they're still calling each other as sort of my, my friend from such and such and my friend from there and there. Um, and I think even, even as a body, we can hold ourselves to some better uh, decorum standards in the sense of, um, at least in that respect, sort of identifying each other by name. We can have our differences, but it should be uh, on, on substance. Um, so those are my own sort of two cents as to what I think the decorum standard should be. What we should do if someone breaks that, I think recess is a helpful tool. Um, personally, I think we need to have a clear way of whether it's turning the microphone off in the room or cutting the feed to the public. Uh, I can't imagine what it looked like uh, the last few meetings um, for folks who were turned in from the public. I don't know, I, I know that at one point when we recessed, it eventually sort of came down. Um, but I think we need sort of a, a quick and efficient way for the council president to be able to either shut off the microphone in the room and or um, be able to shut off uh, the, the, the feed to uh, the public virtually. Um, and you know, in the last few meetings, I will say that I have never sort of felt um, personally unsafe. I can understand how others perhaps would. Um, but when I look around to sort of city councils around the country, I mean, there are some scary stories out there about uh, what's happening in, in some other city councils of folks bringing weapons and being physically threatening. Um, and, you know, I, I don't, I, I think statistically speaking, it's probably unlikely to happen here, but it's a, it's a realistic possibility um, that someone could come to the council um, and present truly unsafe circumstances. And, and I think we need to understand you know, to the extent we need some sort of security presence there, what is it going to be? Because wh whereas I didn't feel unsafe in any of the recent meetings, you know, I'm looking around the room, there's no private security presence, there's no police presence, there's no um, CSO presence. I'm assuming someone's in the building, probably at the front desk in the basement, but how are we gonna reach out to them? How are they gonna know what's happening um, in Contois? I think we need to have um, I think we need a security presence in the room, uh, truthfully. Um, and I'm open to whatever folks feel is, is the right presence in that sense, whether it's private security, whether it's a police presence. I think we should have common consensus as to what that should be. But I do think there should be a security presence, or at the very least, an understanding as to what's our protocol going to be if someone walks in that room with a gun. Uh, if someone walks in that room I mean, you know, someone was just arrested in City Hall Park with a machete and a bow and arrow, right? I mean, nothing would have stopped that person on a Monday night from walking into Contoy's Auditorium. So if someone walks in with a machete, a bow and arrow, a knife, a, a gun, um, I think we need to know what we're going to do. And so on one side of the spectrum, it's what are we doing with someone who's breaking decorum in, in public forum? But I think on the other side of the spectrum, it's we need to have a policy in place if truly unsafe circumstances are present in the room. One thing about, one thing about um, recess is that um, when we do call a recess, the um, Channel 17 plays music um, and there is, a, there is no volume. So in other words, if you're in the room, obviously you're hearing music. Uh, if you are watching um, 
on the live stream, I don't think you do hear anything. Whether you hear, imagine you hear things on Zoom, because Zoom is not the same as, I mean, Zoom you've signed into. So whatever is going on in the room is what you're hearing. Um, don't we control Zoom? Do we control Zoom? The yes, we do control Zoom. I mean, you can mute and unmute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, yeah. YouTube had a lot of what went on after the What's that? YouTube did have a lot did it? Why not? It didn't happen immediately. It did not happen immediately, and that was one thing that, um, <coughs> when it was a, it was probably I don't know how long, but there probably was a, a minute that was in between when you had said to call a recess or asked about calling a recess, I and I don't know how long. Over there. Right, and I don't know how long that was, but after that, it should have gone to the full audio is there. I, I watched it, the full audio is there. there. At no point was the feed cut at our last meeting at so least. That, that, is, that is certainly something that we can obviously look into. And of course, when they, mm -hmm. do the, when they do the final version, obviously if there are issues or edits, they do make those. So I'm not really sure that that gets captured in terms of forever, um, but I would, I, I, need, I would need to look into that. Um, Milo. So um, a lot of stuff thrown out. So we already have a decorum. I don't think we really need to discuss that. I think it's, it is what we do when people um, don't follow that. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we should rope ourselves off. I think that's a bad look. I don't think we should do anything to limit what people talk about. I think we've clearly established from some time now that even though a lot of people do show up to speak about a particular item that is on an agenda, people do show up to speak about other things. And to suddenly change that, that won't be a good look. And especially since everybody's out talking about freedom of speech and things like that, that's gonna go back on what we've been talking about publicly, right? So to do anything like that, I think would be wrong and would um, get a lot of pushback and rightly so. Um, I, I I don't think we should have a police presence. I was actually pretty disturbed that John Murad was there. I, I wasn't sure why he was there. I wasn't sure he was sure why he was there. Um, there was a comment made by someone that they were concerned that he was reaching for his gun. He wasn't reaching for his gun. He was, was kind of befuddled. He was like, like, what to do? What's going on? And, and it would have been best for him to have just sat down, know, know the audience, know the people in the room, and know that in that particular moment and space, um, it, it would have been more of an escalation and not a, a, a de-escalation. I um, want us to be very careful about who we say we're afraid of. Uh, I want us to be very careful about what we talk about. The fact is people walk around this town all the time with all kinds of weapons. Um, maybe I'm more aware because I was on the police commission. Uh, we have some of the uh, easiest or lax uh, open carry laws in the country. You know, I've worked retail in this city and people have, have walked in, you know, strapped. So just because they can and, and they believe it's their right to do so. So we have to be very careful about making assumptions about what people would do. Now, what would be great is to get something through the legislature about bars, because we know we had gunfire incidents. Um, a, a, a large percentage of the ones we had last year occurred in bars um, or right outside of bars. So maybe there should be a standard for um, guns being in certain public, sa uh, public spaces, but lack of, of that in place, that'd be really hard to regulate, and it would mean we're just making assumptions about people um, that could lead to additional problems. I think that when someone breaches decorum, we just immediately, boom, we're having a recess, and we do need to remove ourselves to make it clear, you can't talk to us anymore because you're not following the rules. Um, and if someone turns and talks to someone in uh, the gallery that is breaking decorum and that that requires us to immediately uh, shut it down. And maybe the only thing that maybe you add at the beginning 
of what you say is that if there is any breach in decorum, we will call an immediate recess and leave the room. And then that way people know and understand that. Um, the other thing is that we have to take into consideration and is a little bit harder to do is the root causes of, in particular, what happened at the last meeting. There are specific root causes in terms of the way an issue was handled and how people were talked about. Um, anytime you have, you bring in issues of race, that is going to elevate things. Um, and a lot of people took a lot of what was said personally, um, including myself, including myself. So I think we have to look about, be very conscious of how we talk about things, how it's going to affect members of the public, be aware of what's not only going on in Burlington and Vermont, but what's going on in our country and uh, be more mindful. We have a problem with race in our city, just like every place else. We have been very clumsy about some things, uh, very clumsy, very insensitive. And uh, my, I wish I had a video of my mother watching that meeting. I let her watch it <laughs> and she's 86 years old and she grew up in the South, moved to New York City. She and my father were very much involved in the civil rights movement. Um, and let me tell you, some of the comments of what she saw were just, you know, and I didn't even have to tell her, like, uh, uh, personalities of people that were involved. You know, she could just see. She could see what she saw 50 years ago, you know? So um, these are things we need to think about. We need to think about what have we done in city government that, that causes people to feel that they have to act this way, right? outside of individuals who, yes, we had a couple of individuals who do have some mental health issues, but we did something city government that triggered that. Um, and certainly a lot of other speakers who spoke didn't, don't suffer from those issues, but were very um, passionate about uh, how they were being affected. And uh, the last thing I would say is, especially at that particular one, we had essentially two groups what very powerful things to say about you know what, the, what brought them there. And so in any way to apply again, that we would shut down a public forum and um, affect people who uh, are following the rules would be unacceptable. So we really have to be very, very careful there because that won't fly. Thank you. Before you go, before you go, Sarah, Joe wanted to get in. Joe, okay. Joe now's your time. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I, uh, I unfortunately have to hop off after this, but I just wanted to briefly uh, I agree with uh, what Milo just said. Uh, I don't need to reiterate much of that, but I speak from personal experience that uh, I personally never felt unsafe and in on choice during our meetings. Um, you know, I, we have had public forums that uh, where folks have experienced uh, or shared strong emotions, and you know, I think we we discuss a lot of important issues in our room, and they do uh, as I said, strong response to the community, and I don't think it. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to, to limit that, but you know, I do agree that if it gets to a point where it's no longer a productive conversation, that you know, a recess makes sense and that we should remove ourselves from the room. Um, I, I don't think we should limit the issues that folks are able to bring up in public forum. Uh, I think you know, having an opportunity to talk about an issue that might not be on our agenda, might not be on our radar, while the full council is present and while members of the public are present, uh, I think it's important. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for folks to share concerns that maybe other members of the community are, are dealing with as well. And um, it's an opportunity for folks to learn that maybe they're not alone and uh, struggling with something. And uh, that, you know, it provides an opportunity to, for folks to come together and uh, think of solutions to address those concerns.
patients. Um, you know, I think uh, on the whole, I think the way we manage public forum works, I don't think we have very many meetings where um, uh, things should have gotten out of hand. Uh, and, um, you know, we give people two minutes and most of the time people stick to two minutes. I think it, the, the more we try to interrupt people or uh, uh, get them not to say something, it, it, it only exacerbates an issue. So, you know, I think to the extent that if we are a public body and uh, we do not want to infringe on people's rights to free speech, uh, I think, you know, well, some people can say very painful things. Uh, just letting the clock run out is sometimes the best thing that we can do. But, but if the rules fall and um, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, to a point where the conversation is a little productive, it can make sense for us to take a break and um, let things settle down a little bit. And uh, those are the thoughts that I have for now. I appreciate us having the space to talk about this. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Was I think Sarah was before me. Um, just to comment, I, I think there's a space in between sticking just to the agenda and letting folks talk about everything. I think it should be a public comment on the work of the city. And so there might be things that we don't know about or are a civic concern, and I'm happy to hear that. But sometimes, and there are certain speakers frequently, who may talk about a topic that is not city, city business, so to speak. So I think trying to sort of focus on, you know, how does this relate to Burlington? I don't know how we ask the question on the forum, but um, I think that's just important. It's not about personal relationships. It's not about the entire world in general. It's about what can we as city councilors do to respond to you? How can we, tell us what you're thinking? How can, what idea have you got for us to help us? And so I just think narrowing it and, and stating that we're here to hear what you can, what we can do as a city council to resolve your issue. Not every issue, not every, you know, you can talk to the state government or the federal government for certain other issues. And I, I think that would be, important. I, I have a few, I think I agree with those around the recess. I think that's really important. Leaving the room is really important. So I don't want us to, you know, lose that thought. Um, I would agree with a lot of what Ben has said and then just expanding on I think that if one counselor has expressed a want to have the area roped off, then we kind of owe it to one another to, to do that. I think we will function best as a body if each one of us feels comfortable in doing the work and showing up to the meeting. And just because I may not feel it's necessary to rope off the area, if another counselor does, I would rather create an environment for them where they are going to feel better showing up in that space, even if it doesn't necessarily benefit or make me feel better. I think that will be a big thing for our community as counselors. Thanks for having us, and I think, it, I think we need to have it. We're starting to see, I think, not just in the last couple of meetings, but over the last few years, we have periodically a meeting with a contentious agenda item, and it gets a little, it gets a little crazy. Um, I, too, have ne never felt personally unsafe, although I have to say there was a meeting early in my council tenure where I had people banging drums in back of me, and I did. It was a little disconcerting and it was hard for me to focus. I think we, we need to have a safe, a safe space. And I think some of the ideas around security, I don't think they're outlandish. You know, it's just we're gonna, like, like Ben had said, you know, it's, it, may, it may seem improbable, but so, so do a lot of things that happen, like a lot of school shootings and a lot of things that's gonna happen there. The idea that people are wandering around the park with machetes. Machetes, right? I mean, that's parks right next door. 
So I, I don't think it's it, we should have we should have we should plan for that contingency. What happens if something happens? We should have a plan as a council. And and I am not against having somebody. I don't know if it's Chocolate Thunder or CSOs have been mentioned. Having somebody that's available, they don't have to be standing guard at the door. But they have to be some somewhere where they can act if called upon to act to help us in that situation. So I think those are all legitimate and valid. Points, even though statistically maybe it's not going to happen, but things were things can get pretty heated. Um, with regard to the agenda items, I honestly, you know, we're all upset. We both tend to move our meetings earlier because they go long. We're there to do the people's work, and public comment is a is a valuable part of that. But I don't think it's unreasonable to, if not restrict. Uh, public comments of the agenda items on the meeting, uh, at that particular meeting, at least prioritize those comments first. If we run out of time in public comment and we need to get on to our de deliberative agenda, we should do so. Um, we've had, uh, recently in two, we've had a lot of public comment about an issue, and we've asked people to be respectful, speak to the agenda items when we run out of time, offer, offer to take their written comments, include them with the agenda items on which they're speaking to. And, and we've done that. And I mean, like others have said, public comment forum is one way for public, the public to comment. We have other mechanisms to do that. So um, I would like to see, I would like to see us get to our deliberative agenda as early as we can with, while still uh, respecting the, the, the public forum process. Um, um, oh, in terms of recess, you know, us from removing, I, I, maybe we clear the room instead of us leaving, maybe we clear, we're just going to throw it out there, it may not be a popular sentiment, but we could ask everybody else to leave and, and then have them come back in when, when, um, when the recess is over. That's maybe another take on how to, how to get control of the room and the meeting. So I'll just throw that out there for consideration. I'm sure we may elicit some strong opinions, but it's you know we, we need to we need to get ahead of this this trend a little bit because we're seeing a breakdown in decline more frequently. Thanks, Tim. Sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Karen. I, I, I also think it's a really valuable conversation, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you calling us together to do it. Yeah, I, I'm going to just sort of name sort of the tension that I, I feel inside myself that I, it, seem, it seems to me that it's being expressed in our conversation that I'm guessing everybody feels right. I don't think anybody ran me on the city council because they wanted to limit other, you know, members of the public's ability to, to speak, um, particularly to speak on, you know, difficult, trenched, painful issues like race discussing, and, and there's just a big part of it that just recoils at the notion that we are going to take steps to silence people, or even even create the appearance that we're silencing people, and I, and I, think, I, I feel like we all really feel that way. And on the other hand, I do think we have a responsibility to make sure that these meetings are run in a way, as Mark said, and other, others have said, that we get to the work that we need to get to. Um, we get to the work that is part of good governance, um, and that we do so in a way that encourages everyone to participate um, and to be involved, um, whether it's to be involved by speaking at public forum, whether it's to be involved by being on a commission, whether it's to be involved even just to have your children, as you always say, like, have your children watch and, and, and listen and learn about something do think, right, there's, a, there's, just, there's just a tension between those two goods that, that is going to exist. Those things are going to live in tension with one another. We have to sort of turn a path forward. From what I've heard, you know, I would suggest that just, it seems like there's a couple of things we, we all agree on right now. One is that when the rules of decorum are broken, it seems as though we are Appropriate response is for the city council president to 
call a resource, a recess rather, and for the police the council to leave the room, to de-escalate as we suggested, to create some space and some breathing room. Um, and I would suggest that maybe we explore, or ask you, President Paul, to explore with the city, the city officials, making sure that the Busher conference room is open. It seems to me like just physically that's the best place for us to be. I don't know whether it's always open and available. And maybe we try and come out of this meeting with consensus that when you make the decision that or someone asks or someone asks that point of order like like Ben did the other night that a recess be called that we have a plan. I am not an expert on this, but like we come up with whatever the plan is. Maybe the Busher conference room. And Number two, we agree that we, we recognize and name the fact that you are in a really difficult position and you are going to be called upon, you particularly are going to be called upon to make sort of hard, hard decisions in the heat of the moment and, um, you know, a, a, agree that we are going to, you know, su support you and if we have disagreements about it, we'll address them with you, right? But, but generally support the fact that you're the one most often who has to make calls in the middle of the public forum issue. And then with respect to safety of the city council and the people who come to the meeting, um, I, I think, again, we have to walk on. I don't want to overreact, right? I do not want our city council meetings to look like some sort of armed fortress, I think, as, we, as Milo said, I think that's a bad look. I don't think it's necessary. Um, but I also think we ought to behave responsibly and we ought to have a plan. And whether that plan be that we have a CSO or a private security officer or a police officer perhaps on duty at, in City Hall but not sort of standing there in some way, um, we have someone who's close on call. I mean, do we even know? Does BPD have an officer who's sort of like standing by if we needed someone at City Hall? I think that's an important thing to find a middle ground between making it look like we have, you know, potentially chilling um, folks who, you know, have, have, have maybe come from a place where they don't have a good relationship or a good experience with law enforcement or security. You don't want to chill folks coming from that place. And yet you also want to have a responsible plan in place in case there is a situation where, God forbid, someone acts violently or brings a weapon in. And then last day, I just have one question. Do we have a rule? I actually know this one. I don't. Do we have rules? Are you allowed to bring a firearm in there or speak on some meetings? I was going to ask that question. I wonder how much of this we want to talk about. Our city hall is a place of employment. I wonder how much of this we want to talk about publicly. I think we will have a rule. I think we should have a rule if we are legally allowed to. I mean, City Hall is a place of employment, is a weapons free workplace. City Hall is a public building. I am not aware of a formal policy that we have. There are maybe certain funding sources that require us to maintain a weapons free public building, but I would need to, to look into that a little more and confirm that. Well, Joe's point is well taken, but it might be something we want to look into to President Paul. Do you want me to answer the question? I, I mean, I don't know the answer to that no, question. Just, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Think about okay, it. Do it. Thank <laughs> you. I'll think about it. Gene, then we'll go to Milo. So, um, there's a lot here. And apparently, I missed two exciting meetings uh, last My experiences are not informed by what happened at the last meeting at all. Did get to the office meeting. Um, let me start with the end of what Tim said. I think that it is really important, and Ben was mentioning this, of having a plan. I've been working in and around that building for a really long time, and even as far back as the 80s and 90s, there were incidents that were really pretty unsettling. I can 
can think of one. And we did not have any security there. And it was not, and it was heated, and it was, that, that's the one time that I have felt like, oh, I could get shot, right? Um, not having a plan is a really bad place to be. Um, the the de-escalation points and the different ways that we um, we get folks to be there for the purposes that we're there for, um, I think are varied. And so um, I would suggest that we've got that we should always have people who are around um, who can de-escalate and. Their presence is not escalating in and of itself. It's one of the problems with having uniformed folks. Is it just creates a, a, a you know that that innate tension. What Tim said in terms of chilling. Um, there there's a chill. It's purposeful. That's why you wear those things to stop folks from doing stuff. And in our and in that form, I don't think that it's. Uh, that that's right, but having people who are trained to be de-escalating and maybe more than one with the ability to call other people who are around, I think uh, makes sense for maybe not all the time. You know, when you know people have talked about us going long and this is delaying our business, I have to say that I, I don't think that we have suspended the rules very many times. Two year, the, the coming on the year and a half, the year and three quarters is last time. We haven't done that, so we are taking care of our business, and that means that despite people going off, that we're still able to get it done. So I, I don't think I can't support closing down the the scope of debate. Um, you know. I'm going to name a name. I'm, I'm sorry, Todd. He always stays to his um, his two minutes. It is very uncomfortable to be yelled at the way he does, but he's really articulate. And he makes his point, and I could even tie it into the city's business. So it becomes a really slippery slope for us to be judging what's appropriate and what's not for folks to say. Um, the decor, and I hate to, to say that you're in a very difficult position because, you know, we, we talk about what is acceptable behavior, but this is more of an art than a science. And a, a one outburst, it, I think Joe said this really well, if you, if you shut it down too much, it creates more of, a, of an issue. If somebody goes over, you know, by a sentence or two, and you try to shut them down, then you get into this thing with them. You, I think you've done a wonderful job, you know, dealing with, um, with folks and their time. I, I really do. And you create even have a, a bit of elasticity. Perhaps if, it, if it's thought to be a problem, then, then the, the cutting of the mic um, after 30 or 45 seconds would be fine with a comment that just says, you know, thank you very much. There's all these other people that are, you know, needing to talk and we need to get out to our business. You have two minutes. Thank you. Something that, that does allow you to get control without getting into an argument. I remember getting to arguments or trying to finish, like, the last two sentences with Kurt Wright, you know, and it was just, it was miserable. For me, and I don't think that um, uh, we should do that. And that's particularly true if there are complicated issues. Some people can speak to simply. I, for example, have a tendency to want to throw in all the all the points that you should be considering if I'm speaking in public forum. And that is really hard to, to get into two minutes. So I appreciate when folks are at their um, at their limit. So that is that is a way that you know you could do that. Um, but removing ourselves and having the escalators um, t 
take uh, try to take control. Uh, I, I think it will be really counterproductive to try to empty the room. I think that will then become a fight, and we will lose the meeting, and we will lose the people. And I mean, I understand why you why we want to, you know, why it, it, it is something to do, but I, I I don't think that it should be done. So us doing that, but. One outburst, even though it's not, you know, in the, the rules of decorum, I don't think, and I'm not hearing you anybody say that they are, but I don't think that's grounds to call for a recess. So there, that's the art for this, is when it really feels like it's just getting out of hand. Uh, you know, when Todd and the, the audience were engaged in the back and forth, it's like, okay, this is, we, we, we just have to, to sort of stop. And that, that's something that I would absolutely support you saying we need to take the resources. And, and naming it. I think that's the last thing. When, um, if there's going to be such a disruption, then we should say this is, a, we, we can't continue our business here. This is now. It is now out of control. We need to stop and really take resources to try to, to deal with that. Um, thank you. And thank you for for holding this. Thanks very much. Um, I'm. I'm. Forgive oh, me. I'm so, I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. I have to be in the South End at eight o'clock, so I actually have to leave. My apologies. Um, so, if we're going to do security, I'd prefer uh, Chocolate Thunder. People know Chocolate Thunder. People are comfortable with Chocolate Thunder. Chocolate Thunder has a lot of experience with de-escalation because so many of their employees have worked in bars and concerts and other things like that. I do not think it should be police, and it shouldn't be CSOs. Uh, and actually. For a whole lot of various reasons, we don't have the CSO count right now. Um, I don't want to get into debate about hate speech. Some people feel hate speech is freedom of speech. To me, hate speech is not acceptable. Todd crossed that line. If it's been a black man addressing white women the way he did, it would have been a very different conversation. Facts. Facts. We need to think about that. We have been sloppy about issues of race, and I'm infuriated. I mean, I had to talk to a guy last week who told me, well, the blacks need to listen to police. And he was not talking about a white family from Wisconsin. So we have that in the city, and it's real. And some people are not appreciating that. And this is what's getting us in this hot mess. Now, with regards to doing the work of the people, a former city councilor, to his great regret, and it'll be on his tombstone, in the midst of extremely long public forums that went on for days, got really frustrated and talked about, we need to do the people's work. And that established that he clearly felt there was some kind of division in the city where some people didn't matter. Because what people were talking about at those extended public forums was the people's work. But it clearly wasn't as important to some city councilors as to others. So we want to be very careful when we talk about the people's work. Who are the people? We try to segregate the people. We don't want to go back. We don't want to bring memories of that back because people brought that up for a very long time. So when you, when you, when you say the people's work and the city council in the past has made these divisions as to which people we're going to work for, we need to be very, very careful. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. And I, it seems that everyone talked about great ideas here. And thank you for allowing this to happen. You know, for, especially for the one-on-ones too. Because you not just call us all, but you individually call people to talk about this personally. I think those who felt threatened, it was a good time for them to talk to you. But I think <clears throat> I completely agree, Mr. Uh, Councillor Doherty, about the safety of the city councils when we come together. We don't know when there is a fire, what we're going to do as a body. No fire drills, 
know, active shooter drills, and I think we should know all of those for our safety. But where I don't really feel safe sometimes is not people in the room, but people who are upstairs. I think we need to make sure that those, those, those doors are locked and also when, they, when we allow them to be opened. I think that's, that's the most scary part when I'm uh, in, 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 that, in, that, in the building. You know, and I think it will be also very important for us to not invite some behaviors at our next meeting based on what we're talking about at this exact meeting. Because sometimes our comments is triggering people to show up the next day just to respond to what they heard a counselor talk about. I think we also have a responsibility of uh, being general or sometimes allowing the council president, just like the people, we're asking them, direct your comments to the president. And I think sometimes we should also direct our call to the president so the president can speak on our behalf. You know what I mean? I think that's also very important. It's been six years, and this is not the first time I hear people coming back just to respond to one comment they heard a city councilor said. We have a responsibility to also be safe and feel safe in here. I do believe that it would be imperative public forum is for the public to give them the space, to give them the time, and to not limit what we have allowed them to talk about. They can talk about what is affecting them in the city, what is happening in the world, how does it make them feel. Those two minutes, yes, we need to make sure that they, they, they respect it. I think it will be important. But I have to say, President, that you are doing always an amazing job reminding people there are children watching. I think those lines that you read all the time, they are so important. And I'm so glad that since you become president, you've been, you know, highlighting. And it's important. And that's true. There are kids who are watching, right? And we, we, need, we need to definitely just, um, just do that and allow people, the public, to do so. One thing that I haven't heard, people who are not respecting our rules, what are now the consequences? Speak to the council. You're not speaking to the council and you're addressing the mayor or you're addressing a specific city. What are the consequences? And from my perspective, we need to bring some level of consequence to it. If we cannot allow you to say, oh, you can't speak to public forum because of your behavior, I think we need to create rules or ordinances where you be, will be fined because you're not respecting this is a this is a ordinance or the rule of the city. You drive your car, you do what you should not do, you receive a ticket. You should allow that. You do the research and bring that level of accountability so that people respect this municipal system of governance. I think from my perspective, that's what we need to come up with in order for people to remember that there are consequences if they do not listen or follow the rules. Just wanted to add those. Thank you. Thanks very much. I, I don't know if you can speak to that really as far as, um, you know, we have ordinances, of course we do have enforcement. I don't know if that's something that we're able to do. Or we, I mean, before we would even talk about wanting to do it, is that something we even can do? I, I'm happy to ask that. Okay. Did you want to give Sorry, you want to go on? Well, urgently, you wanted to say something. That's, that's okay. You can answer that question. <laughs> well, it's not that urgent. In, in that, <laughs> unless everybody's ready to jump up and leave. In, in the vein of um, it's a, big, a bigger bucket, like what's our authority to ask them to leave the building, and then what's our authority to say we can't speak in the next five meetings? I mean, there's a whole progression of, um, and I don't know that you can answer that tonight, but. And I'm not sure we want to do it, but there is that sort of what if somebody repeatedly does not follow the rules, what are the consequences? Can the council president, for example, not allow them to speak at a subsequent meeting? I, I'm asking. There's a wonderful federal court case out of the out of yeah. Rutland County where a, a 
guy was very disruptive. And, uh, they they banned him. They no trespassed him from like uh, the school, and that was thrown out in federal court. Okay, I mean, there, are, there are there are real limits okay. um, to the um, the limit to the exercise of free speech. On the other hand, the constitutionality of the uh, disorderly conduct laws, and which have things for disruptions, and that's part of what disorderly conduct is to make it short, uh, have been upheld on uh, both the federal and the uh, state level. So, you know, and we have ordinances that have the right to, uh, you know, to get civil fines or criminal penalties, which I don't think are appropriate. They do require enforcement officers to issue them. So the, it's not so easy as to say, oh, you're going to get a fine, right? It's sort of like the number of people that break the traffic laws is much greater than the number of people who are fined for those violations. On, on magnitude, which we cannot count. And, and, I, would, and I would just add, Councillor Shannon currently raised with me, and then Councillor Jan also also mentioned that we do want to be careful about what we invite, right? And I'm seeing in my practice activist groups um, uh, who, you know, that have a legal wing that are, and we've actually seen some of this in Vermont, are intentionally provoking situations in order to bring First Amendment type cases into court. Um, and like, we don't want to just fall into some trap of, of litigation if it's, if it's not necessary. And you know, I'm not sure we're even close to sort of that stage yet, and at least with anything I've seen. I mean, for whatever it's worth, it's probably nothing. I, I find much personally, much more worrisome, and worrisome when I think about kids when was my oldest kid watching at home not the uh, uh, you know a, a little bit over the two minutes which I think you handle very definitely right and and not even the occasional outburst um, and certainly not sort of the passionate we should we should we should not be in agreement I mean, these are hard issues right the troublesome if we were sitting there in heated agreement right that would be really worrisome that would be a huge red flag <laughs> Um, I've never heard that expression, heated he, agreement. He yeah. <laughs> I can see why you don't. Yeah. 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 It's never happened. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> well, what I, the, the things that have stood out for me and that made me go home not feeling so good are when people make personal remarks about city officials. And I've heard that, right, recently. Personal amounts of remarks about city officials' family members, what city officials look like. You know, that kind of personalization also talk about chilling effect. It has a chilling effect. It has a chilling effect. People don't then want to participate. They don't want to run for office. They don't want to be on the commissions. Who wants to, part who wants to be involved if that is what's going to be said? And I do think we need to police that line. Yeah, I, I think you can try. I mean, I think you can right. But like, I, to me, that is more important than ever. Well, this is arguably not on the city agenda. Well, okay. We went over by a few seconds. Okay. To me, when we start talking, when we start personalizing things like that, I think we should be really careful about that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you about that. I wanted to talk about just some of the things I've heard around the room. One of the things is the stanchions. You, you brought that up. And Hannah, I think you have a very wise and kind approach to that. Like, some people here may not feel it's needed. That was not my idea. I have never suggested it. Um, and maybe it would make other people in the room feel safe. And we have had a former colleague who felt very threatened. I, I have heard from city employees who are very upset about how many people come behind us. Um, <clears throat> Again, not my issue. I've never really raised anything about that. We have had a former city councilor who had a huge issue with this, um, for good reason. 
and it seems like very basic and not actually a very unfriendly thing to do to say this is our space here to kind of define those spaces doesn't seem like a big ask to me um, because there's space not only in the room behind us but in our case the stage which is curtained off that's that's not safe and agree completely with what Ali said, something I have been fighting for since, for probably 15 years. The thing that makes me feel most unsafe is when the doors are unlocked above. Um, I think that there's just no reason that the only time those doors should be unlocked is if there's overflow and we choose to unlock them. There is safety in numbers, there's safety in community observation, um, and to have one or two up people up there, and sometimes it's been my own daughter. Um, I don't feel unsafe when she's there, but <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, it doesn't matter that some people would like to be up there by themselves. I get that. Um, should not be open. It probably is a good area for security because there's a very good view from above there. If it should be open, I think opening the sections that are on the back wall, not the sections behind us, having something in advance set up. Um, it's very unusual if we would actually need the entire balcony and keeping everybody in front of us is better. Having only security, somebody like Chocolate Thunder, whoever we decide, I think it is, is fine. I think that Gene is right that seeming heavy handed as soon as a bad word slips out, you know, oh, we're all out of our seats and we're in the back room and you know, we're holding up everybody. No, um, that's not really us. And I don't imagine you really doing that. I don't imagine us really jumping at that. But maybe if we can all, um, maybe the warning to people is, you'll, if you break one of our rules, we'll give you a warning. Um, but we're not gonna get, that means you're going to get interrupted and you're not going to get more time. So you're gonna lose time. <clears throat> and somebody breaks one of the rules, I think a counselor says point of order, Council, counselor Paul, you know the rules, you know why that person's calling the point of order, you say point well ta taking counselor Jane and correct the person speaking when the bell rings. And I think we can all also kind of observe the, the tone of our meeting. And when the tone of our meeting, it's not just one person, we're seeing these things happen repeatedly and we need to change the tone of our meeting that's the time to say I'd like to call a recess and um, so I don't think it has to be really heavy-handed or I think there's room for some some judgment here but I also think it's really helpful when counselors are the ones saying not only this is not up to President Paul's standard this isn't up to our standard and it's helpful if it's not always the same counselor saying point of order, you know, if we can all try and, and pitch in in, you know, how we expect this to, to go. I think that that would be really helpful. Um, as far as clearing the room, I appreciate why that's appealing. I just think it's easier to control us than it is to control them. And so it's just going to be much easier for us to say we're going to remove ourselves from this situation, we'll come back when this room is cooled off. I think people have taken some comments that I made the wrong way. Um, there's been kind of accusations about who makes who feel unsafe. And I haven't felt, I have not felt unsafe in, in recent meetings, but I have, was trying to point out that members of the public stood up at our meeting and asked us, how are you keeping us, members of the public, safe in this room? And I said, that's a good question. How are we keeping these members of the public safe? How are we keeping speakers safe? And how are we keeping us safe and staff safe? As, as Council Paul said, or President Paul said. And um, in my long course of time here, the times, I, what's made me feel unsafe is people in the balcony, especially with people with backpacks in the balcony. Um, and 
there was one meeting, which you might remember, I don't know if you were there or not, where we adjourned our meeting unexpectedly and early. And I remember wondering how I was going to exit this irate room. So the meeting was over, I needed to exit the room, and everybody in the room was hotter than hot um, because something unexpected happened. You have to remind me of yeah, I don't You might not have been that. there. I think you might not have been there either. I don't know if I remember that. Um, we reconvened. We were there when we reconvened. There were many points of order of that meeting that triggers any memories. Um, but at any, at any rate, things do happen. They're not always. There, there's some things that happen that are predictable. There's something on our agenda that we know is a hot and divisive issue. There are times, it seems less so recently, when we have hot issues, it's only one side in the room, which historically hasn't been the case. Historically, we've, had, we've talked about gun control, and two opposing sides are in the room, and it isn't actually kind of the public against us the way it's felt at times more recently. It's a public against each other. And they're really, really mad. And <clears throat> there was a little bit of that dynamic in that meeting with Todd where he said something offensive and the room rose up against him. And I think physically probably felt threatening to him because of the physical rising up and moving towards him. Um, I think that that probably felt threatening to him. But we have to be prepared for the unexpected. Some of these things, I think a plan should be known to counselors. It doesn't necessarily have to be publicly known, you know, what our safety and security plans are. Um, you know, maybe that's based on the, the overall conversation here. I hope, Karen, maybe that's something that you can work on and um, let us know what the plan is. We, we elected you, and I also think that there is room for disagreement and respect for the fact that you are our council president, and um, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna need to set some boundaries, and we need to help support you in the boundaries that, that you set. Thanks, um, thank you. Gene. On the question of stanchions, you know, we invite the public to give those forms to Lori. Lori is way in the back. So we just have to be really conscious of the, the changes that need to be made if you're going to do that. There's, I don't think there's anything inflammatory about having stanchions that are, you know, that, that, that delineate the boundaries between from the, where the speaker table is, the public forum table is, over to where the council, and even otherwise, because like those bathrooms are not public, the bathroom there is not public, a public bathroom. But we just, but there are staff people there, but there are, we do expect um, folks to interact with the public, uh, with our people to interact with the public, and so we, we might have this change that I, I, I think it's totally reasonable to close the upstairs unless there's an overflow. But if we, you know, people, when it's really crowded downstairs, they start to fill in the space. They don't necessarily sit down in the chairs. They start to stand. We've, we've all been in meetings like that. So you have stanchions. We just have to be really conscious. And just like we've got a plan for emergencies, um, we have to plan to be able to um, to open doors upstairs if need be and try to direct people and take the time to do that. I, I mean, I think you, we could do something like stanchions in a reasonable way, but we've got to think it through um, so we don't inadvertently um, cause more problems because we haven't really thought it through. I, mean, I think we have to use those in the past Usually it's been when we've known there was going to be a large group of people. And I don't, I've never spoken to a city councilor that enjoys having someone literally this far away from them with their back, to their back. And I think that is a, 
you know, and we even have that with, you know, there are times where the media also, you know, is pretty close. And, um, you know, I mean, I've never felt really great when that happens. I sort of want people to not be quite that close. Um, you know, it just, it just sort of gives you a little bit of a claustrophobic kind of, you know, just too tight. Um, never mind the fact that we all sit at a table close together, but I think that's a little bit different. Um, um, I mean, what, I, what I'm hearing is that, <clears throat> you know, we, when it comes to the questions or the thoughts that I had asked before is, you know, turning to face the, the, the rest of the community is not what we ask of people. They're here to talk with us, not to talk with all the other people that are here. Um, and that is a breach of decorum. I mean, you are right. I mean, you know, if we, if we called a recess every time somebody unfortunately uses profanity, we'd have a lot of recesses sometimes. It's, it's gotten better and it ebbs and flows, um, you know, but, um, you know, I think the, the challenge uh, in a couple of other meetings was just simply that once, once there is a, just a prolific amount of profanity, the next speaker will feel that that's okay. And so that is when you have to sort of say, okay, is once enough, is twice enough? You know, what is enough before it really is a breach of decorum and it's just gonna devolve from there? Um, the, um, you know, when somebody refuses to stop speaking, um, you know, we can, we, you know, we can after, you know, after whatever amount of time, say, okay, that's it, you know, you're done. Um, you know, two minutes doesn't mean two hours and two minutes and 45. Um, and you have to stop speaking and a microphone can certainly go off. Um, I will also talk with CCTV that when a, uh, when a recess is called, that, that, ends, that, ends the, that ends what is going on in the room. Um, particularly, of course, if we leave the room. And I'm, I'm really heartened by the fact that I don't hear anybody saying that if we call a recess, a real way to get people's attention and understand that we are no longer listening is to leave the room. Um, you know, I, I really, I'm really heartened by that. Uh, I, think it, I think it will work, and I don't know that we'll necessarily have to do it very often. Um, but I do think you're right, you know, that, um, and what I'm hearing is we need to have a plan. Um, it sounds to me like we don't want to list, we don't want to limit comment, but is there some level of agreement that while we don't want to limit comment, that it is not unreasonable to prioritize the speakers who are here to speak to agenda items first? Is that, is that, is there a common understand, is there a common feeling that that's really what we're here to do and that the people that are, that ha are here to speak to not just an agenda item, but something that relates to the work of the council as opposed to just simply being able to come and talk with us about their, you know, their feelings about their ex-spouse <laughs> or yeah. whatever. I mean, I think, you know, and you weren't at the last meeting, Jean, you know, the, I think that the challenge was that it was a very short agenda. I think we were all expecting this was gonna be a, a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty calm meeting. Um, we had, you, right, and in fact, I. Uh, you right. missed nothing. Well. No, I didn't think I, you know, like I could Well, fiscal health is at nothing, but the, <laughs> but the, um, I think the the thing that I caught a lot of us by surprise was that there really were only I don't know three people, four people who wanted to speak during public forum, and it's 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 hard to listen to someone. Um, speak during public forum about other people in the community and really def really I mean it was it was just incredibly I don't know if you could call it hurtful but it was really just demoralizing to people and these are these are just citizens that are you know they go about their lives I don't know if anything is true or not true but it was really it was just it was harsh to listen to and I think that you know, is another realm. I mean, it's one thing to be, you know, attacking or, you know, personalizing comments about people at this table, but it was quite another to hear what was said. And I think that, I think that was really just challenging. I don't know what the answer is, 
Tim, I think, said very well in terms of the, uh, the rule of decorum is not personalizing things, and I, I agree with that. To anyone? Yeah, 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 you know, like, it doesn't help us. I mean, it just doesn't help us at all to deal with difficult issues, to just have other people call names. We, we go ahead. Sorry, I, I think it's a really good idea that this notion of us leaving, because I think it emphasizes the point, which is that the city council meeting, the purpose is the city council, like, the people are addressing the city council right? That they're there to address us, and that is the rule that they address you as the president. They don't address individual council members. And then the other thing, I really strongly disagree with any suggestion that members of city departments or the heads of city departments, regardless of whatever city department it is, including the police chief, the fire chief, should, is not welcome at a city council meeting. And I think it's really important that members of the public do not address you know, a, 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 a city employee who happens to be there for whatever reason. I think that's just a bad precedent and a slippery slope. They disagree with city policy, they disagree with the department's doing, they disagree with the mayor's doing, they disagree with what we're doing, they have disagreements, they express them with you. All of them. But just, you know, to address, you know, so and so, that not a good, that should be, I think, again, one of those things that should be more police than other things. And then I was thinking maybe some fun music. You could just put on some fun music. <laughs> and like two minutes of like the Oscars. So, <laughs> nice classical comedy. Yeah. Yeah. I love where your head's at, Tim. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I will um, I will talk with Chief Lachance about a fire drill. We've never done a fire drill. And you know what? We should. Mm -hmm. We should know where to go should there be an emergency. Um, so <laughs> excellent, excellent point, Ollie. Um, which way are we going? Uh, and uh, we'll all we'll all try to follow directions and go in one direction. <laughs> um, I I do hear what you're saying about people being upstairs. I've heard that a number of times. Um, most of the time, we don't need the upstairs, and we really don't need to have those doors open, particularly the ones that are next to us. Um, we'll um, I think. I think what I'm hearing is that you know while it would while it would be good to have some kind of security that private, chocolate thunder. I also am wondering whether or not because um, I know this has come up before. There are a couple of people that have, that speak at public forum. We all know who they are, who are well known to street outreach, and they will sometimes come to the meetings or will be around city hall because they they know. They know that, and they may actually have had an interaction with that person during the day, and so they know to be on be on alert for that. Um, and I think that's something that we can certainly do. You, did you want to say something, Sarah? I'm sorry. I don't. Know. I don't. Want to, if I just had a couple of comments back on the security emergency yeah. plans. Sure. <laughs> we absolutely need them. <coughs> we need to make sure who knows them, since councilors <laughs> change and turn over. So. I think there needs to be some discussion with the administration, like kind of who's on first, you know, if there is a fire drill, if there's a violent situation, who leads the pack, you know, and an emergency plan would have all that, but I just want to make sure that we, I'm not sure I think it's necessarily the council president's job, so as we develop a plan, we should do that. The other thing I was just going to um, comment on, and I don't know how to wedge this in, but you know, is there a way for us to maybe have more public forums for contentious issues and then say, but you don't get to say it every, 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 every meeting. You know, we're going we're gonna to talk to you and we're going to listen to you about the issues, but that's our feedback. You know, on this subject, you can come talk to us and tell us, that, you know, not a formal public hearing, which is kind of, mandated by zoning and stuff, but uh, McNeil, you know, come tell us what you're thinking, but we don't have to hear it eight meetings in a row. We want you, and even though, maybe those public forums, you should give people longer. I mean, if it's, if it's a particular topic that we want your feedback on, you get five minutes. Um, and I'd rather hear somebody talk for five minutes or six minutes than two minutes three times in a row. I mean, I think you, you, we get more 
feedback by giving you a shot to tell us in detail why you support or don't some support something, but I don't need to hear it. You know, repetition doesn't, doesn't persuade me. Um, depth does. So I just think that's something we should have, sort of think about. But we are going to have, you know, we are going to have other contentious issues. I mean, that's just the nature of what this is. And some of them we know, and some of them we don't know until we get there. Um, I will, um, I'm going to try to synopsize all of this and get this into some readable form, particularly to be able to share with those people that either had to leave early or weren't able to come. Um, the other thing I would suggest is that it's taken a while, um, but the council rules that we completely redone um, are not yet on, uh, what is that called? Um, Co-publishing. Co um, they, um, we have them, they're, they're actually, they're on this agenda. Um, and uh, I will say I did think about the fact that we all should, just like, on, just like when you become an employee of a business, you should have to sign that you read the employee manual. I don't know that we need to all be able, I'll be that accountable to say that yes, I have to sign something that says I've read the council rules. But in the absence of that, I just hope that everyone will read the, the council rules. Um, with the exception of, of just a few city councilors, we all agreed to those rules. So it's not only that they're the rules, they're the ones that we voted on. So um, hopefully you'll all have a chance to read those and, um, you know, and just take to heart what we, you know, what we all agreed to. Um, I think the most important issue, and I, I, will, I will just put it out there, is that, you know, we, we can't impugn the character of one another. There is no advantage to that as a body. It is disrespectful, and it's not the way that we can treat each that we have, that it's not the way for us to treat each other. So I would just ask that we all think about that, you know, when you're speaking that in the, in the heat of a moment that we just not, we just not talk badly of one another. Um, and try to work it out privately. Um, we can have our disagreements, but please don't, please don't say, please don't accuse people of things or impugn one another's character. Um, you're all good people. You really are. You're all good people, and there's no reason for us to do that. Um, Could I just make one comment? Sure. The recess, it just kind of occurs to me that what we've been discussing maybe a little bit more than we really need the idea of leaving the room. I think that there are times we need to leave the room. I think there are other times when we can, there's lots of times where we are taking a recess, not having anything to do with public forum. We take a recess, we want to be in the room. Um, <clears throat> there are different levels of things that can happen at public forum. There's different levels of things that happen in the room. And I think that we, just need to be cognizant that when we are taking a recess for the purpose of cooling something off, at a minimum, get out of your chairs. Just leave the table. Turn off your microphones. And then um, if you, Karen, think that this has kind of reached that higher level, I think it would be helpful if you announce, yes, we will take a recess and counselors please exit the room. And then we know where we're going. We're going out. <clears throat> okay. All right. Ben, did you want to say something? And then we'll have to... I, I had two very brief things to say, but I, I just do, do want to say one thing. I completely agree with everything Joan is saying about the recess and needing to step away from the table and so on and so forth. I also think, again, we're going to need some protocol about whose responsibility it is to diffuse the situation that we've just left in the room. I think it's unfortunate that at the last session, the folks who, and I'm very grateful that they did it, but the folks who ultimately sort of left the room and diffused the situation were Milo and Zariah. Um, and I think that if, you know, we had sort of a clear protocol in place as to what's going to happen, are we going to step away, and is there a presence in the room, whether it's Chocolate Thunder, whether it's someone else who's going to be responsible for trying to de-escalate the room when we leave, I think we need that in place. Two other really brief things. You may have just said this, Karen, and I'm sorry if I just missed it, but the council rules that we updated, they do need to be updated online. 
Uh, okay, we just said that. All right. Uh, Were you not paying attention? I, 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 I admit <laughs> it. I, I thought I heard. That's one of our rules. Did you hear me? <laughs> Sixty percent sure I had heard it. Forty percent put it out there. Uh, just uh, the other thing that would be a suggestion is I, I I think you've heard from all of us that we really appreciate the comments that you make before public forum. I think just one really minor suggestion would be um, I would totally be open to your saying that the council has jointly asked me to say to you all, right? Mm -hmm. And then that way it's the council's expectations as opposed to Karen Paul's rules. Um, I think. You know that that may go some way in um, trying to establish that this is sort of some, some joint commitment that we've reached here. Well, I don't think that that's minor. I think that's actually mm -hmm. a big deal. And thank you, thank you for saying that. Um, I gr I agree. You know, it's been a you know the last last couple of meetings have been challenging. Um, you know, I would love to be able to think. I think we all would love to be able to think that when you're presented with something like this. That you can that you can do it yourself, and the reality is none of us can. I know I can't. Um, I need all of you. You know, I need all of you to to be there to to help me and to know that you know if I if I say we're going to leave the room that no one is going to say well I disagree with you <laughs> <laughs> because that would definitely not be helpful. Um, we all bring different skills to the table and we all bring different groups of people to the table with us and I think that's our strength not not, uh, not I think that's a positive not a negative um, thank you for all giving up and giving up another day um, yes Ali was here yesterday thinking <laughs> that it was yesterday so he gave up two <laughs> and um, but thank you for giving up another day to, to come and, and talk um, on a Tuesday we will We'll be back together on the 10th of October. Um, without objection, we'll adjourn. Uh, we'll adjourn this at uh, 8:23.